Hi folks, Mark Allen Barnett. This is networking part two with uh, Mab's musical stuff. And I, I'm continuing on about uh, the things that we go through, the challenges we go through. How do you get known? A lot of this is like that old question. You remember, how do you get a job without the experience? How do you get experience without a job? Well, a lot of that in music is like that. How do you get known until somebody knows you? It's kind of this, you're in a conundrum all the time. Well, you work your way up. How do you write with better writers? How do you get on the better shows? Well, a lot of it is patience. A lot of it is that one-on-one -on -one thing. Now, that's the thing that you have to remember that's the most important for you. How one-on-one -on -one can you be? How can you have songs that make people go, wow, that's really, really cool? How can you have performances that keep them on the edge of the seat? How do you have the continuous one-on-one -on -one dialogue with others? other writers, what it is about other writers that you like and vice versa. What's going to make somebody go, man, this guy's got something or this girl's got something special. Uh, aside from just the physical manifestation, that always kind of goes without saying. Uh, and if you're not the hottest model or hottest uh, jock wannabe, you got to find as many ways and use what you have. And, and of course, that's all subjective. So, uh, you know, you kind of go on whatever works for you. But you need to find who you are. That's an important thing. In our songs, we're telling people who we are, what we think about, what, who, who it is. That's, so don't waste an opportunity. I, I, I'm asked to listen to a lot of songs a lot of times uh, from people, and I'll, I'll hear them, and I, I'll watch them on stage, and, and I'll, I'll say, there's not that much wrong with that. There's just not enough right with that. And that's a big how do you stand up? How do you stand out and make people go, wow, that's something very, very cool. I want to hear more of that. And that is networking. Every aspect of that is networking. So how do you get into these vaunted writer circles? And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be into people. Well, you show up and you do the open mics a couple of times, and then hopefully that leads you to writer's nights. Again, a lot of people come from in and out of town. You have to continue those relationships when you're not in town. Collect business cards. Sometimes it's very simple. Collect business cards or contact information. Go to Facebook. Now, here's the thing about Facebook, and boy, we're in a real weird one today because of all this uh, information that's been sold on Facebook, but all social networking. I just use Facebook as an example because that's what I'm doing this on a lot. But there are millions of sites, and it's all incumbent upon us to find out what works for us. And, and so we have to present ourselves in whatever that we're doing uh, in that few minutes that we have to get people's attention or seconds and something. And, and so writing songs that present you well and performing them present you well make people want to hear more. And then they go to your website. Now, here's the, here's the rub that I'm going to go. And this might rub people the wrong way. I don't care. Sorry. It's being very cautious about uh, your keeping social media clean. These days, everybody wants to put every aspect of every second of their life up there, whether it's live, uh, Facebook Live, or uh, what other, whatever mode of operandus of the day putting up. And, and a lot of times we can get on our rants. It is a uh, very politically charged world, and everybody's putting all their opinions on there. I would say to artists and, and writers to... Keep in mind that stuff stays up there, and, and you may say something uh, in an offensive way, and people will tune you out before you even get a chance. Now, does that mean, well, I keep, I, I've got my freedom of speech? Yeah, you can. You, you've got, you can say anything that you want to. You can do anything you want to. You just have to remember that people can refer to it, and it might be one day down the road, you might have ticked off somebody and by something you said years ago and made a big deal about, and it comes back to haunt you when you actually need that person. I always am kind of uh, interested in, in celebrity and, and how people act. And Michael Jordan, the basketball player, had a very interesting thing because people used to get on him. Why was he not on the social uh, causes of the day? He was very well-known basketball player, African-American, actually changed everything about the game of basketball, turned into celebrity branding. It was just amazing. And he had all these products. And somebody said, well, why are you not on the social media? And expecting him to be Democrat. And he said, Republicans buy tennis shoes too. And so the point of that is, is that 
if you get into controversial things, you're going to, you have to make up your mind if that's what you want to do. I had a guy come in uh, from out of town. He had a song, this was about 2006, and he had a song that was very anti-war. At the time, we were in the war of Iraq and Iran, and uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. And he had the song, and he felt strongly about it. And I, I said, well, okay, you know, if, if you want to do this, and one of the reasons he came to me on his tour was to cut down from about eight or nine songs to three that he could play on a writer's night, what represented him the best, and then performance tips. And he had this song that was a kind of, <laughs> it was a it was an interesting one, a prickly pear song. And he, I said, well, two things will happen to you. Uh, first of all, you're going to alienate half your audience because half of the people are not going to agree with you no matter what you do. And so they're going to tune you out immediately. And they're going to go into their conversations or on their phones and you're done. The other thing is that you are going to have people that agree with you, that like they're going to be coming up to you, but it's not to help you in your song. It's to give you their CD for you to help them with their song, which is about the same thing. What I did say to him is the song that he had written was just kind of the same thing that was said a billion times at that time. We get into these uh, these things of the day and, and we get, we're passionate about them and we write them and we're all writing generally the same stuff, which is the hard thing, make you stand out. You gotta find a twist, you gotta find something different. And so I, I said, well, that's what'll happen. But he was, said he's strong, so we worked on on his performance. I gave him tips on certain lines to emphasize and, and certain thing. And sure enough, he went to a writer's night. He did it. His first two songs really didn't help him that well because he, he was, the songs weren't quite there. He could have used some more attention to detail before, but he had his things. That was what he was there for. So he goes on and sure enough, as soon as he hit that song, just the nature of the song, first of all, the subject matter, then the preachy aspect. It was very preachy and condescending, and, and it was very pointing his finger in, in people's face. And you could just see the phones come up, and you could see people going to the restroom, and people wanted to come, and the, the conversation burbed around in, in the audience, and, and he was just losing them. As soon as he finished, he got off stage. Yeah, there were about three people that beelined their way over to him, and there they had their CDs right in their hand to try to, here's, here's my song on that. How about pushing me? You know, and that's what we do. And, and we all kind of write in the same stuff. So when you're taking on a confrontational subject, you need to be cautious. Just think about it. Say what you want to say. That's your deal. You can, you got freedom of speech, but people don't have to listen to you. And, and a lot of times taking that attitude, I'm bull in a china shop is going to be a tough road to hoe, particularly as you're trying to work your way up. Same with things that you say on, on social media. I'm not telling you what to say or what not to say. I'm telling you what probably will happen. Another thing of songs with a shelf life, and, and we had gotten into this also about 2005, but we get into it all the time. Uh, currently, we're in the giant gun de debate as school shootings and violence, terrorism is everywhere, and people get passionate about these issues. And around 2005, we had Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, Her Hurricane uh, Ivan, and it affected a lot of us in the South, and particularly uh, Katrina, which was in New Orleans. And a lot of people were writing those songs for, and, and you could hear them coming out and they made references to New Orleans, made references to jazz and the Crescent City and all that. Well, the problem is the news cycle is 24 hours a day and it just changes so fast. So you have to be cautious about writing something that's going to expire very quickly or that everybody's going to be writing the same thing. Uh, you have a... the. 9-11, you have world crisis, you try and write that, and pretty much as you're writing it, everybody else is writing, because songwriters write what they see and what they feel passionate about, and so they, it, it's going to get a crowded issue very quickly, which makes it more difficult to, for it to stand out, and you have to be careful how you take those subjects. Had they written a lot of those songs, not necessarily about Katrina, but about storms, about hurricanes, tornadoes. I actually wrote a song called Lucky, which is about a, a, a dog displaced in, in a storm. It has a little more shelf life, and it doesn't tie you to one issue. If you're going to write something about the issue of the day, be careful to know that that changes very quickly. We're going to have to break this one on down into uh, into three parts, and so uh, here we go again. Uh, you didn't choose music. Music chooses you. Mark Allen Barnett, I'll be back in a minute.